Hi everyone, welcome back to GM Details and I'm very excited to bring you part one of a three part video series on this 12 year old Vauxhall Corsa. So the plan is to give the car a thorough wash using the new rebranded Blitz detailing products, excited to try them out. The car doesn't look particularly dirty on camera due mainly to the glossiness bouncing the light back into the lens and hiding its true condition. It's probably been three or four weeks without a clean. Regular viewers to the channel might remember that this car belongs to my mum. She's 77 years of age and obviously isn't able to clean it herself. It's parked in a public car park without access to power or water, so it's a bit difficult to have it vacuumed, but I do give it a two bucket wash any time I go over for a visit. The next video will be giving the Corsa a polish using Ferregla G3 Pro all-in-one polish and the third video will be a full interior detail as at the moment it's an absolute disaster. So let's get stuck into these wheels. For the arches I'm using Multi at a 5 to 1 dilution for periodic cleaning or medium soiling as the label states so that's around 170 millilitres of product and 830 millilitres of water. So I'm going to let that soak into the arches for a bit before going in with my newest purchase, the EZ Go Brush. Can't believe I've left it so long before getting one, but those that have got them know their worth. I'll come back to the multi a little later on to see how it'll do cleaning wheels and tyres. Gecko Wheel Cleaner is Blitz Detailing's ready to use wheel cleaner. I generally avoid these for myself as they're just not worth the money in my opinion. But what if the price of a bottle is little more than a Big Mac meal? It's tempting to give it a try. If the supplied trigger would actually be able to deliver it to the wheel to be cleaned. Ah, that's better. Good old Canyon triggers to the rescue. But to be fair, I brought this to the attention of the owner of the brand and he said sourcing triggers and bottles is still a major headache and I've given them some recommendations to look into so hopefully some good comes of that. The cleaner itself is a thick gel and really takes some effort getting it through the trigger. Anyone that's used EZ Car Care Geo Gel will be familiar with its consistency. It does cling on well though and as it's not a foam the strength of the product isn't diluted so if you're not sure of your delicate wheels are suitable test on a small area first before going full tonto on them. As you'd expect from an alkaline wheel cleaner it makes an excellent tyre cleaner too. These huge sidewalls on the 15 inch tyres are ideal for this soft tipped alloy wheel cleaner brush. The edges of it are rubber too so if you're using it on alloys you're not going to damage anything. I usually only bring this out for heavier vehicles but the alloy isn't in the best condition anyway and there's really little point bringing out delicate little brushes to clean them with. Well, except for the wheel nut area. So after the final rinse down of the wheel, I have to say I'm quite impressed with the performance of the gel, less so of the scent of it, which I think is actually like a pine toilet cleaner. I used the multi all purpose cleaner on the EZ detail brushes to clean the barrels, but they're badly needing removed and decontaminated. I wasn't going to bother really, but I just can't leave them with a layer of brake dust on them. Many of you already use an alkaline all purpose cleaner for wheels already, so I'm going to use that and that alone for the rear wheels as they've got drum brakes so you don't get the same brake dust build up on them. Okay so it's nothing special an all purpose cleaner cleaning a wheel, especially one with no brake dust on it but at least it's brightened it up a bit and with using an APC it's saved the gel from being wasted on a job it wasn't needed for. 
but I was a little disappointed in the tyre cleaning ability of the APC when the gecko pulled a load of browning out, yet the multi didn't seem to have any brown about it at all. Why didn't I give it a second hit? Well, to be perfectly honest, my mum doesn't care whether tyre dressings last or not, so with that in mind, I left it as it was. Extreme Snow Foam is an alkaline snow foam and cherry scented, and even at the recommended 10 to 1 dilution, you can still smell it when it's been applied. Glad to see Blitz detailing not recommending an inch or two in the bottom of the lance. So for anyone who doesn't know what 10 to 1 means, it's supposed to be 90ml of snow foam, but who's measuring this stuff? Well, apart from me. <laughs> I never use a litre, so I'm mixing up 500ml solution, and you've guessed it, 50 milliliters in the lands with 450 milliliters of water. Add your water first so that you don't get too much foam in the tank when you add the snow foam. That's quite important as the solution isn't too frothy before it's sucked into the lands itself. If it's already foamy, then you're not going to get good foam and it won't work as well. But just remember to give it a good mix though, but don't shake it. Now, snow foam is a whole video worth of information, which I started working on last year, but then somebody else brought out a video and I had to put mine on hold for a wee while. So for now, I'm going to bite my tongue and say, well, at 10 to 1 dilution, it might not suit everyone's pressure washers, or lances, or water pressure, or temperature, or technique. Even the water flow rate from a pressure washer can affect how the foam looks. Now if I was using this in my car, you'd not see this so well, but I bet you're all sitting there watching this saying how this foam looks crap. It ran off too quickly and it's all on the ground. Exactly my initial thoughts, until... Have I topped it up with more foam? No. Increased the water pressure? No. I've adjusted the dial on the top of the lance to full tank suction, or full minus sign on the dial. This has significantly increased the thickness of the foam, which on an MJJC lance, I'd be getting the Gillette out. But on this KDN detailing one, the adjuster is different. It doesn't have a ravenous thirst when you close it down, and it delivers the correct consistency for this type of foam. Now, I'm not saying you need to buy the lance with this foam just for to, to make it work. Just be mindful that your tools have variables. Play around with them and find what works for you. They're definitely not all the same. So back to the blitzed extreme foam. Once I got the consistency right, the dwell time is excellent, allowing the consistent coverage and wetting ability for the dirt. It's also very easy to rinse away from the bottom like any sane human being does, and it doesn't leave any nasty residue behind either. Only the cleaning power to measure now. I hold my hands up to not checking the dirt before applying the snow foam to compare the cleaning power, but I will be using it more as we head into winter conditions, comparing it with other alkaline foams, but for now, let's get on with the contact wash. Jelly bean scented highly concentrated pH neutral car wash shampoo. There's definitely a theme of luminous green with these products, so I've used my green chemical guys dirt cyclone guard for continuity. Apologise to anyone who has trypophobia, it's definitely not the dirt trap for you guys. So instructions say to add 25 to 45 millilitres into a 25 litre bucket, which is great as if you're in a hard water area, you'll need a little more than I need in a soft water area. So I added 30 millilitres and honestly felt that was too much, as the suds were just a little overpowering at that dilution. So for this shampoo, just adding a glug isn't advised. Best to try and measure out what you're going to need using the cap, which is around 5 millilitres of shampoo. So it's certainly one of the better shampoos out there that I've tried. It's pH neutral, very economical, and it doesn't contain any waxes or masks any protection. How do I know that? Well, the glass has got a ceramic sealant on the side windows, and there was no difference to the performance of it after rinsing away. 
So it's slick and it has that lovely jelly bean scent, which I thought actually was apple. I've never known a wash mitt to keep delivering suds as much as this. I was able to cover the roof and all of the windows with both sides of the mitt. And by the time I was finished, there was still half a bucket of shampoo left. Rinsing was effortless too. You can either pressure rinse off or you can use a garden hose. There's no residue left behind. Just remember, my top tip is not to use too much as it's a very concentrated shampoo. With an absence of tar and glue remover from the Blitz range at the moment, I've turned to Autoglan's Spartar, another gel-like formula. Had this sample for a while now, thought I'd try it out. Tar and glue removers are another product affected by raw material price increases, so if you can find good ones out there, then stock up. My favourite at the moment is AM Tar, but this Spartar is certainly making light work of removing more than I can see. A little spritz on the cloth and it's easily wiped away and the best feature of this product is it doesn't smell anywhere near as bad as some of them. But I still throw the cloth away that's been used for tar. I'm not making that mistake again of throwing in the washing machine. Anyone done that? The second part of chemical decontamination or removing anything from the paint that couldn't be removed by the contact wash is a fallout remover. If you're not familiar with what they are, it's an acid-based chemical designed to remove tiny iron particles which have been airborne and become stuck to your paintwork. Sometimes you'll see people using them as wheel cleaners for dramatic effect on Instagram. But you'll know how I feel about that if you're a regular viewer to the channel. And here I am about to use it on wheels but it is at the correct part of the process, after they've already been cleaned with a wheel cleaner or shampoo. That way you get the full benefit of the product and not just throwing your money literally down the drain. Times are harder now, you know. This is actually a very close contender to Built Hamber Corosol. Very similar in viscosity, scent and ease of rinsing. The way it works is the chemical finds these tiny particles that have attached themselves to your paintwork and attacks the rust that bonds it on, which then is highlighted as a purple trace to give you a visual indicator that it's found some. It's very clever stuff. You might be surprised to see how little contamination it finds on wheels as old and trash disease. That's because regular cleaning helps protect against a heavy buildup of contamination. You'll see a lot of purple reaction in the barrels of the wheel, which is quite normal and this is where the brake discs will deposit iron when you press the brake pedal, but I'm pleased to see that the blitzed fallout has found very little on the wheel surface. Now it's also very important not to let a fallout remover dry on your paintwork, so on sunny days you'll have a shorter working window with the product before it dries in. So either work in the shade in the morning or in the evening, or if you're trying to make a video Ignore all that and just get on with it. A good fallout remover will have a built-in foam in action to aid the rinsing away of iron particles. Some are harder than others to remove. You can take advantage of this by using your wash mitt and lightly agitating the fallout remover as long as it's still wet. It helps prevent it drying out and I find it easier to rinse away like this too. Don't worry about dragging fallout across the paint. The particles aren't usually that big to cause any damage but it's entirely up to you if you want to do it this way. I'll be polishing the car anyway, so if there's any damage, it won't be there long. We're nearly at the end of the process for the first video, so thanks for sticking around to watch it. I'm going to be using a clay mitt for speed, so I need something to lubricate the mitt, something the Blitz Detailing Shampoo is actually designed for, to be used in a lance. 
This will deliver just the right amount of lubricant to help the G3 Pro claim it glide across the paint, picking up any further contamination or ingrained dirt. It uses rubber polymer technology to do the job in half the time of a clay bar and can even be reused. The downside to using these is that they can leave a little bit more marring than, than a clay bar would, but as you may have seen throughout the video, the paint isn't exactly in the best condition anyway. They're actually very easy to use, just very lightly pass the mitt over the paintwork and you may hear that it sounds quite rough. That's it exfoliating the paint, pulling out anything that makes the paint look and feel as rough as toast. Just listen. It's important that you rinse the clay mitt regularly to deposit any of the nasties into the water, ready to go again on another panel. The longer you work the mitt though, the danger of marring gets greater, so don't get carried away. Regular rinsing and take your time with it. Sometimes when you use it for the first time, it's quite a strange experience like rubbing a brick across your paint, but keep going until it sounds smooth. There's definitely a difference in the feel and sound, but you'll pick it up in no time. Don't forget your glass too. It's actually a good idea to prime the mitt on the glass for the first use. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is about as far as this episode goes. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what the range of chemicals from Blitz Detailing has achieved. They're on special relaunch promotion until the end of September 2022. Five 500ml bottles for £25 plus postage. Now there's a bargain. I'll put a link to that deal in the description below as well as all the other products used in the video. In episode 2, I'll be using the new Ferrecla all-in-one polish to see if it's good enough to deal with these defects. They're swirls, holograms, the lot. So I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Until then, happy detailing. Cheerio bye.